Right, this is part two of 7.4.4, and we're going to explain the charge equations today. So to help us explain this, we're going to set up a circuit that's got a battery, a resistor, and a capacitor. So through this simple circuit, we can charge this capacitor. So the capacitor is charged through a simple circuit. At the start, the capacitor does not have any potential difference. So let's put the potential differences here. So we've got the potential difference from the battery, potential difference from the capacitor. And then we can also say that this resistor has a resistance R, so it also has a potential difference across the resistor. At the start, the capacitor's potential difference is zero because the capacitor has not been charged yet, so it has no potential difference. So we already understand that in the uncharged situation, once that switch has been closed, the largest current will begin to flow immediately, and the current will decline as we allow that capacitor to charge. Also, once we've closed that switch, we can look at the potential differences in the circuit and we can look at it as the potential differences in and out. So we treat the capacitor as any other component that's dropping some of the potential difference from the battery. Or rather, in this case, it's, it's taking some of it. So as the capacitor charges, V battery is equal to V of resistor plus V of capacitor. And put a box around here. So V of battery remains constant. That's just the potential difference of the battery. It remains as it is from start to the end. Initially, because the capacitor isn't charged, it does not push back at all on any current. So it almost behaves like it has no resistance. So at the beginning, the potential difference across the resistor is large, and the potential difference across the capacitor is small. As we allow time to move on, the potential difference across the capacitor increases as more charges are accumulated on it. That makes the capacitor behave as having more resistance because it pushes back. And therefore, by ratios of potential differences and resistances, the potential difference across our resistor will decline as time moves on, and the uh, potential difference across the capacitor will increase. So, underneath this equation, I'm going to write goes, and we're going to do some arrows here. So for the V of R, it's going to go down. And for V of C, it's going to go up as time goes on. But the sum of both of those is always going to equal to the sum of the battery. So we've got V of the battery is equal to the potential difference across our resistor 
Well, we know from electricity that V is equal to IR. So I'm going to write IR. Plus the potential difference of the capacitor. Now let's recall what is causing this potential difference to build up. We know that Q equals to CV, where C, the capacitance of the capacitor, is a constant. So as more charges build up, so as the charge Q increases, the potential difference is also increasing. So on the side here, we'll make a note that Q equals to CV. So V equals to Q over C. So instead of writing V capacitor, I'm going to write Q over C. And put a box around that. So if we just compare this equation, we can figure this out quite simply, is that as the capacitor is charging, and it takes some time to charge, the charge stored in the capacitor Q must increase. And if the charge stored in the capacitor increases, then Q over C as a term increases. If Q over C as a term increases, then IR as a term must decrease so that the sum of, the, of both of them is still equal to VB. So as capacitor charges, Q increases. Which increases the Q over C term. I'll put in brackets V of capacitor. So IR term must decrease, which is V resistor. Now the resistance is constant, right, of a resistor. So in order to decrease the IR term, it's going to be the current that decreases. So I must decrease. Now we think about it a little bit more. That resistor and the capacitor, well, they were in series with each other. And as per the electricity laws, if components are in series, well, they must have the same current. So the current that's decreasing of the resistor means that the current getting to the capacitor is also decreasing. So our resistor and capacitor are in series. So I is the same for both. So now that we know that our current is decreasing, it's basically the same as the decay graph. Current is decaying in this situation. So we're going to bring back our decay equation. So current is the same as discharge equation. So I equals to I naught e to the minus t over RC. And we sub 
into the equation above. So now we're going to get the V battery is equal to I naught R e to the minus T over RC plus Q over C. Now what I want to do is I want to rearrange this equation. So we've got Q over C equals to VB minus I naught R E to the minus T over RC. And we can multiply C to the other side. So we've got Q equals to VBC minus I naught R, I naught RC, sorry. E to the minus T over RC. Now we, we can analyze what's going on here and we can figure out some very interesting things. So VB times C. Well, V battery happens to also be the maximum potential difference that our capacitor can reach. So when it's fully charged, the capacitor will be equal to VB and V going through uh, the resistor will become zero because current will cease to flow at that point. So as when current ceases to flow, IR, I is zero, so IR is zero, so V across the R resistor is zero. And so at that point, V battery is equal to V capacitor. So V battery times capac the capacitance is the same as the maximum potential difference of our capacitor times by its capacitance, V naught C. So this becomes Q equals to V naught times by C minus, now I naught R, the largest current that can flow in the circuit times by the resistor, resistance, will give us the largest potential difference possible. Well, the largest potential difference possible is the potential difference of the battery. Well, the potential difference of the battery is also the maximum potential difference achievable by the capacitor. So I naught times R is also V naught. Now, Q equals to CV. If you do Q equals CV with V naught, the largest potential difference will give you the largest charge that you can store on this capacitor. So V naught C is equal to Q naught. So this gives us Q equals to Q naught minus Q naught e to the minus T over RC. And now we can factorize this and we get Q equals to Q naught 1 minus e to the minus t over RC. And that gives us our charge equation.
we can verify that this is correct because we know that current is the rate of change of charge, it's dq dt. So if we were to differentiate this, we would hope to go back to our current equation. So if I did dq dt, which would be equal to d by dt of q0 into 1 minus e to the minus t over rc. Now q0 is not a function of time, q0 is a constant. So if we were to expand this, we get dq dt equals to dq naught by dt minus d by dt of q naught e to the minus t over rc. So as q naught is a constant, if you try to differentiate a constant, it simply goes away. So dq dt is equal to minus, and then we do d, d by dt of this stuff. So the q naught will remain where it is. And when you differentiate an e, you stay as an e, e to the minus t over rc. But then what we need to do is we need to um, apply chain rule. So now we differentiate the function within the function, which is the power. So when we differentiate that, we get minus 1 over rc. So times by minus 1 over rc. The minuses will cancel each other out. So we've got dq by dt equals to q naught over rc e to the minus t over rc. Now, we already defined rate of change of charge. Well, that's just current. So I equals to Q0 over C, well we know that Q equals to CV, so the largest charge possible divided by the capacitance of the capacitor, that gives us the largest possible potential difference, which is V0 over R, E to the minus T over RC. Now we know that V equals to IR, so if we have the largest possible potential difference divided by the resistance, we get the largest possible current. And that gives us I equals to I naught E to the minus T over RC. And we have gone back to the current equation. And that's the end of 7.4.4.